you are Genesis to Revelations Daily Study. We are now three months in, so well done if you've kept up, kept up with it. Second Samuel chapters ten verse twelve. David's sin is today's study. Starting with David defeats Ammon and Syria. Second Sam, Second Samuel chapters ten, reading from verse one. And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon had died, and Hanan his son reigned in his stead. Then David said, I will show kindness unto Hanan, the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his, for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan, Dear Lord, thinkest thou that David doth honour thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Have not the David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city, and to spy it out, and to overthrow it? Wherefore Hanan told David's servants, sorry, wherefore Hanan took David's servants, and shaved off the half of their beards, and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. When they told it to David, he sent to meet to them, because the men were greatly ashamed, and the king said, Tarry yet at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. Verse 18. And the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of this men of seven hundred chariots of the Syrians, and forty thousand horsemen, and smote Shobak, the captain of their host, who died there. And when all the kings that were servants to had a had a saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon any more. Read the whole story to find out the bits I left out. Now I told you some of the history is entertaining. Some people read their favourite novels many times, so we should also read our Bibles many times. The more you read it, the more you understand, and you remember more things. It also gives a biblical background to the Middle Eastern troubles of today. Jumping on to David and Bathsheba, chapters, chapter 11, verse 1. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at a time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still in Jerusalem, and it came to pass in an evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanliness. And she returned unto her house, and the woman conceived, and sent, and told David, and said, I am with child. And David sent Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. I'll read her story. Quite entertaining. Uriah was a very um, righteous man or proud man, and David had to do some things to try and trick him to be to, to no, you'll see anyway. I'm going to read from jump to verse 14. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire from him that he may be smitten and die. Verse 26, And when the wife of Uriah heard that, heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when she, the mourning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Yahweh God. I said to encourage you to read or listen to the account I have left some bits out. It is one of the main accounts of the Bible. Note the intermarriage between the inhabitants of Israel, which is Bathsheba and Uriah the Hittite. Also, non Hebrew being in an army or congregation of Israel as one of them, which is Uriah. Simply, as a congregation and a nation of Israel was made up of individuals of many nationalities, so it continues to the new heaven and earth. Some scriptures that shows us that God is not partial to any particular person, but those that obey him. There's one law for everybody. Exodus chapter 12, verse 49. One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that 
rights of children among you. Numbers 15:16. One law, one manner shall be for you and for a stranger that sojourn with you. Numbers 15:29. You shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourn among them. Acts 10:34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and work of righteousness is accepted with him. Romans 10.12 For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek or the Gentile, for the same master over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Uh, Romans 10.17 So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, which is the Old Testament. 2 Timothy 3.15 And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in the Messiah. So whoever from which a nation reads those scriptures and follows them is acceptable by God. Jumping on to chapters 12, reading from verse 1, which is in the rain, Nathan the prophet comes and rebukes David for what he did. And Yahweh sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save for one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished up, up. And he grew up together with him and with his children. He did eat of his own meat, and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveller into unto the rich man, and he spared to to take his own flock of and he didn't take this, his own flock of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man in the story that is, and he said to Nathan, As Yahweh liveth the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith Yahweh God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore thou then hast thou despised the command of Yahweh, and do evil in this sight in his sight. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thy house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbour, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. And the child that David had from that um, encounter with Bathsheba died, and he got a, a, new, a new child, which is Solomon. I'm reading from chapters 12, verse 24, Solomon's birth. And David coveted Bathsheba his wife, and went in unto her, and lay with her, and she bare a son, and she called his name Solomon, and Yahweh loved him, and he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Jedid Hia, which means beloved of Yahweh, because of Yahweh. So the consequences of David's above a sin, or sins, and God's prophecy will be played out via one of his, his sons, who I mentioned um, a few days ago, Absalom. And it will be in chapters 12, sorry, chapter 16, verse 21 in, in, in particular. So it is funny how, like David, we keep some of the commandments, but not the ones that go against our desires. In Leviticus chapters 15 18, it talks about the woman also with whom a man shall lie with seed of compilation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean till the evening. So David waited until she, she was clean from her, from her purification or from her, her uncleanliness for doing what he did. And then James chapter 1 14, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away from his own 
harassed and enticed. So the Bible says, God doesn't make us sin or entice us to sin. It is our own desire. If our desire is to keep God's commandments and make that the fondness between our eyes and in our hearts, hopefully they should be there to, to make us resist the temptations of the devil. Shalom until tomorrow.